Hi, this is Jim Hoovey at Ward Brat Music, and today we're going to talk about uh, Chemflush, and let's find out what it is and what it isn't, dispel some myths, and uh, just kind of go through it and show you the process that's involved. So here we have a, a silver professional level uh, trumpet uh, that we are going to disassemble first and then chem flush. This instrument is going to be having some dent work done as well and so some, some cosmetic things other than just the cleaning. But uh, we will start with the cleaning. So first we disassemble and we want to get these valves out. If you want to get a close shot of this, um, you can see there's quite a bit of crud in here. Now some of these instruments will exhibit a real green crusty look which is properly called um, calculus. We, could, we can refer to it as dental plaque or whatever or calcification um, but that is the primary thing that we want to get rid of in the chem flush process. Now there are other processes to clean a horn. I have not found one yet to date that does as thorough or as an effective job as chem flush. In a chemical flush, as the name implies, we do use a chemical. We use an acid solution to remove that material and to get it out. Is it safe? Absolutely. I'll show you why. Um, a lot of times people think chemicals. Well, chemicals are dangerous. Chemicals are bad. That's not necessarily true. If handled properly and in the right concentrations, they're very useful. Now I'm just tapping with my rawhide mallet to get those bottom caps off. Yeah, they use properly, they're very safe and they're very helpful to what we're going to do. And we'll accomplish the job and do an effective job uh, cleaning. Now we've got the second slide, it's pretty dented in and it's also frozen, so I'm going to pull that loose with my slide puller. And we'll take care of that also. We're going to remove these dents in there. So. Everything goes into this clean cleaning bucket. I like to wipe down the grease, the slide grease on the slides. And that will allow the chemicals to do their job without having that barrier of grease. In some cases, we would want to do a um, degreasing with soap and water solution or some solvent. Uh, it, this particular horn doesn't have a real heavy buildup, so we probably can get by with that without doing that step. Um, oftentimes, people ask, how often? How often should we have a horn chem flushed? As often as it needs it. In some cases, once a year is great plenty. We do recommend approximately once a year to have this done. Uh, if you have a body chemistry that will calcify a horn, if you have a body chemistry that will build plaque on your teeth uh, or um, harder on your teeth rather quickly. You're probably one of those lucky folks that should have it done more frequently. I've had customers, they need it done every two, three months. Um, usually once a year is great plenty, and it's the greatest preventive measure you can take uh, to maintaining your instrument and keeping it playable and uh, stopping any of those harmful processes that will etch away and destroy the brass and the internal of the horn. So this, it's largely an internal um, function. In the case of a silver plated instrument, we are, we are also going to be uh, cleaning and polishing the surface. On a lacquered brass instrument, it's prim primarily internal because we're not polishing on lacquered brass. The, the uh, metal is polished and then it's coated, clear coated, so we don't really uh, have any work to do there. Unless there's a lot of lacquer missing, we can do buff and touch up lacquer in those situations. So let's go into the chem room and uh, do the do the dirty work. Okay. So sometimes people ask me, well, what kind of chemical do you have? What do you use? Um, we use an acid solution. It's kind of proprietary, but it's natural and it's found in your stomach. So, is it safe? Yeah, it's safe. Do you want to drink it? No, you don't want to drink it. But it is, it's natural and uh, it's very, very effective for what we need to do. So we're going to submerge the instrument in the chemical. Um, I wear gloves, rubber gloves, when I work in the chemicals. But are they dangerous? I wouldn't put my hand in it if it was. They're safe. Is that stinging me? If I had a cut, lemon juice would sting. This is not going to hurt me. Why do I wear gloves? Because your hands 
have very fine oils. And if I did that all day, every day, I'm going to really dry out my hands. And they already get dry in the winter time. So I'm going to rinse that off. And regular water, I don't need to do anything fancy to, uh, to neutralize that. Just regular water will neutralize the acid uh, solution. So again, will I put my hands in there repeatedly? No, because I want to be safe. I want to be uh, cautious about what I do too. Primarily, I just don't want to dry out my hands because I'm doing this all day, every day. And, and that could be, uh, ultimately it would just really kind of damage the exterior of your skin. But it's not harmful, it's not deadly. Sometimes we think of acid as something that a person gets gets it thrown on them and they, it disfigures them. We're talking, those are very, very incredibly powerful uh, acids that uh, are not like, not like our friend here. Okay, so we've given our, um, our chemical uh, a few minutes to work on our parts and on these pistons in particular, I, I put them in a slightly stronger concentration. Um, and as you can see, that black kind of crud is is come out. And I'm agitating it with a brush to really scrub that and loosen any crud. I've used other methods such as ultrasonic cleaning and I have not found anything yet to be as effective as the chemical cleaning on an instrument. Um, I think ultrasonics do have their place I don't think they're designed properly to address the main issue, and that's to get out the calcification or the calculus out of an instrument. That stuff gets pretty hard, and uh, the ultrasonic waves just don't seem to quite cut it. Um, I've heard various opinions on this, but uh, collectively, having gotten a lot of them uh, from not only other instrumentalists that have used them, but other technicians. and. My opinion is, is that the chem flush is still the Cadillac, and again, handled safely and properly. Um, so I've got the valves cleaned up, and you can see they're really looking nice and spiffy on the inside now. They're decalcified. I've also uh, bright dipped them. I keep a very small amount of uh, bright dip solution to clean the brass and brighten that up shiny. Um, those are ready. The valves. I've, or the slides rather, I've, I've cleaned. And now I'm going to put those in another solution. This is a detarnishing solution. When I said, you know, handling things safely and appropriately, you can see up here we have a, a, a ventilation system that runs 24 seven. That does take fumes and there are fumes that come off of our, our acid solution that we use. Um, as you can see, it does cause things to rust. That's why it's ventilated. Um, we, we would have too much of an issue with tools rusting. So there are some common sense, there are some, there are some equipment that's needed to, to properly handle this stuff and, and do it right. Um, I'm also going to put my trumpet section in there. Uh, it's, it's got some tarnish on it, so we want to get there, this in here. This will help detarnish it but this won't entirely do it. I will have to still hand polish this. So I've just sprayed out the, the pistons uh, with the compressed air. It gets really loud when I do this, so I wear hearing protection. I'm very conscious about using hearing protection in this process, so that's been sprayed off. I'm gonna foam up everything now with some silver polish. This goes on wet. And then I will spray it off with compressed air, but then I'm going to take a polishing cloth and, and polish all these slides and get in every crook and cranny on this, on this instrument. But this really is the uh, a very light rouge, jeweler's rouge, embedded in this, uh, this foam. And this will do a really nice job. So now we're doing the, the ragging and polishing aspect of it. We're taking that silver polish that I put on and uh, taking a strip of cotton cloth that's also got a dry treatment on it. 
of silver polish and this does a really nice job detailing and effectively getting all the tarnish and just making it shine So the last part of uh, after I've kind of polished it out is to to hit the brass uh, sleeves where the slides go, and I'm using crocus cloth. This is really fine emery, and this this polishes and gets the tarnish off the raw brass, which will and does tarnish more readily than uh, silver plated uh, pieces. So we want to get those clean so that the slides move freely. Um, I don't do this in every last situation. There are some cases where the slides fit a little loosely and I do not like to take metal off of slide tubes. Um, in these cases, those slides move and they need to move quickly. So we don't usually have too much of an issue with them not fitting uh, appropriately. Um, so I'll go ahead and clean those off like that. And then we just go ahead and, and clean all these other uh, slide tubes and get those going. Want to make sure everything's polished and clean. Another silver polishing cloth. An old 7 8 drumstick comes in handy for these kinds of jobs. I'm going to get under the water key. In some cases, it's helpful to take the water key off. In most cases, that's not really necessary. So, we're uh, putting the valve guides back in these nice clean valves that were uh, chemically cleaned. Putting the spring, the valve stem on, and the felt. I will check the, for the porting alignment with the valve. I've got a lighted valve mirror that I will check inside to make sure that they're aligning on the inside. Um, if they're not aligned properly, it plays poorly. Now, we'll go back over to the trumpet here. Uh, two things you can do to on your own. Uh, as really good preventive measure, maintenance, oil and lubricate your valves and slides regularly. Oil the valves each time before you play and uh, lubricate the valves or slides about once a month and you'll be in great shape. It will also alert you if there is an issue with a frozen slide that needs to be taken care of. Um, if you never pull them, if you never move them, they will get frozen, and that can get expensive to pull those out if they're if they're uh, frozen badly. Let's check that porting alignment. I just put in a new cork there, and you can't see this, but if we look down that, I'm looking for a crescent shape on the valve, and um, that is lining right up real nicely. Uh, so that's good. And then I will check the downstroke by looking down the port, down the tube. That will be very hard to see with the camera, but mm -hmm. I'll make sure that that is lining up. So we reassemble it with slide grease. I use uh, a lanolin-based uh, slide lubricant that we sell here in the store. I like the blue juice for valve oil. I think it's a real quality product. Um, I like some of the synthetic oils also. And then I um, like this silky slide grease on the slide tubes. On the third slide and the first slide of a trumpet, what do I want to use? I want to use a lightweight oil. Not, not, not as light as regular valve oil. This one's got some body to it. It's lighter than, say, 30 weight oil. But I'll put that on each of these tubes so that that will move quickly and freely. Um, now, as an alternative, you can use slide grease. So that's basically it, the nuts and bolts of doing a chem flush. Uh, we didn't cover every last little thing in detail, but it gives you an idea. And um, everything's reassembled, everything's lubricated, uh, oiled, uh, valves are adjusted, and we 
always want to make sure it plays. Before it leaves the bench, it's got to play right so that we know if something comes back, it's like, well, it did play when it left, so. And we want to just check the valves and make sure everything's good. There we go.